if we consider now parallel and perpendicular lines, parallel lines are any two lines that have the same gradient. So if we consider these two lines over here on the right, these are parallel because they have the, both have the same gradient of 2. Perpendicular lines, on the other hand, the product of their gradients is negative 1. So if M1 and M2 are the gradients of the two lines that we're talking about, M1 times M2 is um, equal to negative 1. We often write that relationship as M2 is equal to negative 1 over... The other thing we might talk about here is our perpendicular bisector. Our perpendicular bisector is the line that is perpendicular or right angles to the other line here, but it splits the line in half, so it bisects the line in half. Okay, so let's have a look. We need to find a line parallel to 2x minus y equal to 4, which means they have to have the same gradient. So let's find the gradient of 2x minus y equal to 4 first. So if we rearrange, 2x minus 4 is equal to y. So we know then that the gradient of that line, m1, is equal to 2, which also gives me the gradient then of my second line since they're parallel, m2 equal to 2. So then I've got now the gradient and a point the line goes through. So whether I use y equals mx plus c or y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, it's your choice. I prefer, as I've said, the y minus y1. So there's my y value there. y minus 2 is equal to m times x minus 1. So expand the bracket and group my terms. I'll get y is equal to 2x minus 2 plus 2 when I take it across. And so y equal to 2x is a line that's parallel to 2x minus y equal to 4 and goes through the point 1, 2. For the line that's perpendicular, well, I've already got... Um, the gradient of that line, m1 equal to 2. So then if it's a perpendicular line, m2 has to equal negative 1 over 2. So the gradient of my perpendicular line is negative a half. Now the point that we're going to go through, um, we've decided, or I've decided it will go through the point 1, 2. So again, using the same formula, y equals mx plus c, or the form that I use, substitute my gradient and point in, and we'll get y minus 2 equals negative a half x plus a half. Take the 2 across, 2 across. Remember to add fractions, you've got to have a common denominator. So let's add 4 on 2. So minus a half x plus 1 on 2 plus 4 on 2 is 5 on 2. For example 15, we need a perpendicular bisector. So what if we just have a quick sketch of what it is we might be looking at here? So if I I sketch the graph of 2x minus y equal to 4. I can see that the y-intercept there would be at um, negative 4 and the x-intercept at 2. Now the points that we're interested in are the points negative 1, negative 6 and 2, 0. So if I just restrict my line to be that size, the line that I'm looking for is a line that's perpendicular to that. So it means it intersects at right angles and it goes through the middle of that line. So that's what the bisector part means, it goes through the centre. So to find the centre of a line, well that's the midpoint, isn't it? So we need to go back and use our midpoint rule. So the midpoint, x1 plus x2 on 2, y1 plus y2 on 2, would give me uh, 2 plus negative 1 on 2 and 0 plus negative 6 on 2. So that's going to give me a half negative 3, so that's the midpoint, so I now have got the point that the line goes through, the gradient of that line. Um, if we rearrange our equation, even though we've sort of done this part of it before, we'd get y equal to 2x minus 4, so as we thought the gradient of that line is 2, so the gradient of the line perpendicular m2 is negative 1 on 2, so now I've got a gradient and I've got a point the line goes through, so again, I can substitute those values into my uh, point gradient form of the equation. So y minus negative uh, 3 is equal to negative a half times x minus a half. So if I multiply through those brackets, group my like terms, we come up with an equation there of y is equal to minus a half. Minus a half x minus 
11 on 4. So I'm just sort of hoping that you can see the bottom part of that working out. So if we just compare that to the equation of the green line that we've drawn in, minus a half x minus 11 on 4, well we can see our green line there has a negative gradient, so that's promising. And a y-intercept of negative 11 on 4 seems reasonable, given the, the intercept of the blue line is down at negative 6. Negative 11 on 4 is a little bit under negative 3, so, so our answer seems reasonable. So let's have a look in example 16. Two lines are perpendicular. So that straight away tells me that the gradients of the two lines have to be negative 1, and there's a point of intersection they go to. So there's two bits of information there. So the first step might be to try and find the gradients of both lines and um, make their product equal to negative 1. OK, so let's start with uh, um, rearranging the equations to get our, our gradients. So rearranging the first equation, so if I take my 5y across and bring 2 back to the left-hand side, I'll get 2x plus 2 equal to 5y. Divide everything by 5. And so then I'll get y is equal to 2 over 5x plus 2 on 5. So the gradient of my first line there is equal to 2 on 5. So let's rearrange equation 2 to try and work out the gradient of this line. So taking k, k y across to the right-hand side and bringing m to the left-hand side, I can write that as k y equal to 3x minus m, divide by k, y equals 3 on kx minus m on k. So the gradient term in that equation is 3 on k. So since the lines are perpendicular, we know that m1 times m2 has to equal negative 1. So if we multiply those two expressions together, we should get negative 1. That leaves us with 2 on 5 times 3 on k is equal to negative 1. So when multiplying fractions, multiply top, multiply bottom. So we'll end up with 6 over 5k is equal to negative 1. So take the 5k across by multiplying, divide by negative 1 we'll end up with a negative 5k is equal to 6, and so k will equal to negative 6 on 5, which is what we had to see, which is what the answer was. For the second part, we know that they intersect at negative 1, 0, so the second equation needs to satisfy that point. So if I substitute negative 1, 0 into that equation, um, I can work out my m value. So 3 times negative 1 minus k times 0 has to equal m, and so we get m equal to negative 3.